Chairman, three points. The first one is fairly light-hearted and concerns you personally. I thought about you on Saturday when Italy were playing Ireland in a rugby match. And uh, my sons and myself, my sons are rugby players, one's a lock and one's a prop, we all supported Italy. And they said to me, please pass on our deep commiseration to your chairman. We thought Italy played a great game and we're pleased that you have come in to make the five nations the six nations and we really would like to see you do well. Right, two points on milk. Um, I have written to the Commission about this, but I'm just going to air it here as well. Does the Commission still intend to include a provision in its plans to reform the dairy sector which will give producers the right to a contract with certain minimum conditions, even where a member state chooses not to exercise its option to make this obligatory? So I just want to air that again. Finally, um, Mark Tarabella mentioned Canada. Now, of course, Canada is a sovereign state making its own decisions on its own agriculture. They have something called supply management in milk, and it's my ambition to see Britain outside the EU and having its own milk policy very like Canada's because it's compliant with WTO conditions and the Canadian dairy farmers have a stable future. Thank you. Grazie. Grazie per il tif and thank you for your support for the Italian teams. Thank you. Now, Mr. Bovet, our Deputy Chairman. No, c'est intéressant, c'est un mouvement, un moment. Well, it was a historic moment because uh, the UK wants to join Canada, and I understand that Canada wanted to break with the UK, but that was another historic moment. Je crois que c'est un... Well, it's interesting that we talk about Canada. It's absolutely right to look at the way in which uh, Canada has mastered production in their own way. It's a model that exists. It's consistent. But one should bear in mind, and I think that this has been said um, in other groups as well as here, the EU and Canada are currently um, negotiating a free trade agreement, and within the context of that free trade agreement, uh, Canada is offering the European Union a dismantling of its milk um, policy and a um, phasing out of quotas. And if we are able to get to that solution, it would be a total um, a catastrophe not only for Canadian farmers but on the international level because multinationals uh, will play the field as they wish. So it's my impression that not only internationally but elsewhere there are various uh, dangers uh, for milk producers uh, with the um, situation that we see in Canada. But internally here in the EU we are and I think we need to think about producers first and foremost, uh, we, need, we are organizing a programmed disappearance of a huge number of uh, producers. As of 2009, producers who have left uh, the industry has gone up uh, on an ongoing basis, and this is a catastrophe. If we liberalize the market, and I say the pro uh, draft as proposed by the Commission today, does not have the wherewithal to deal with the problems in the um, milk sector. It's, we don't have uh, management of volumes. Uh, there's no guarantee for producer prices. And if we don't have that, how are we going to maintain um, dairy farms? It's agro-industry that will design, decide, and um, farmers will have uh, no say in the s decisions uh, that are taken. And that is something that I feel is quite dangerous today. So I think we need to tread cautiously here. Contracts, that's not enough. Uh, we already had contracts to a certain extent before. Saying that contracts will um, allow us to make headway, well, I think that's a pipe dream. So I think we need to plead for the fact that this is an illusion to think that uh, we're going to um, have a better world after quotas are abolished in 2015. You can call it what you like, but we need to manage production, supply and demand. That is a sine qua non, not only in um, the EU as a whole, but in individual member states. We need to make sure that production costs are covered. Uh, this is a commitment that we've taken. This is a, 
a follow-on to a report uh, that was adopted here in the Agricultural Committee. And I think we need to dig our heels in, and it's not acceptable for production costs uh, not to be part and parcel of the regulation. On transparency, yes, we need transparency, and this has been stated in the Agriculture Committee. We need agro-industry transparency and also um, uh, transparency for um, large distributors. They need to put the figures on the table. We can never have enough transparency, and I can uh, give you various examples of agro-industry companies uh, that are hiding the figures in terms of uh, the cost of production. We've had uh, quotas for 20 years, and uh, industrialists have uh, accepted the quota prices. Uh, and it's been very good business for them because they were sure of the prices and they were sure of the volume. Mastering the um, prices is not in contradiction with a p viable policy for farmers.